Hello and welcome to class. In today's government class, we'll be looking at the policy of assimilation, features of the policy of assimilation, and we'll be ending the class there. What is policy of assimilation? The policy of assimilation was an administrative principle initially adopted by the French in our territories where it aimed at turning Africans into Frenchmen after they must have substituted their indigenous cultures with French language, culture, law, religion and civilization. The principle saw African culture as primitive, barbaric and uncivilized and the French culture as superior and most civilized in the world and those that are were already assimilated that is the frenchified africans they were regarded as citizens and they enjoyed the rights and privileges of french that french citizens too that french citizens too would enjoy so the policy of assimilation was a policy that was adopted by Fran by the by the french by, French in our by the French in our territories because she felt that the African culture was barbaric, was, it was nonsense, it was uncivilized, it was primitive. Like, how are people living like this? How would people be dressing like this? How would people be eating like this? Why are they living this way? This is wrong. So they saw their culture as more civilized. They saw their culture as better. And they wanted to impose this superior and this best culture in the world on the Africans. So... The aim of the policy of assimilation was to change the Africans into Frenchmen, to make them be like the Frenchmen. So it was, it was all about changing the old lifestyle of those people, their language, their culture, their laws, their religions, everything about those people. The French wanted to change it because they felt their culture was barbaric, was uncivilized, it was total nonsense. How do people live like this in this age? What type of language are they speaking? And all the rest. And once these people, once these Africans were assimilated, once they became um, Frenchmen, once they were assimilated, they became Frenchified Africans, they were regarded as citizens of France and they equally enjoyed the rights and privileges that French citizens would enjoy. The next thing we'll be looking at in this class is the features of the policy of assimilation. What are the characteristics of the policy of assimilation? When we talk about the policy of assimilation, what are the things that would be, would be when, when people are talking about the policy of assimilation, what are the things that are distinct about this policy? The first is that under the policy of assimilation, French colonies were regarded as overseas France or an integral part of France. So, in the, under the policy of assimilation, every of the colonial territories of France in Africa, they were regarded as a part of France, as a territory of France in Africa. So they were an integral part of France and they were regarded as overseas France. So France that is in Africa. The next feature of the policy of assimilation is it made use of direct centralized administrative system in French West Africa. It made use of a direct centralized administrative system in French West Africa. French as French West Africa was administered was administered as a unit. As we said earlier, when we're looking um, through the um, the administrative structure of French in West Africa, we said every of the colonial territories of France in West Africa came together and they formed a federation. So regardless of the countries on their own, every single of French of French colonial territory in West Africa, they joined all of them together to form what we call a federation and the governor general of the federation was added by a governor general. So French, the French made use of a direct centralized system in to administrate their colonies in West Africa. French West Africa was administered as a unit with a federation with administrative headquarter in Dakar, Senegal. So the whole of the colonial territories of France in West Africa was administered as a unit, and this unit was called the Federation. It was headed by a governor general, and the headquarters was located in Dakar, Senegal. At the head was a governor general. Each territory was a component part of the Federation with a governor at the at the head. So each of the colonial territories that came together to form the um, the federation, the colonial territories on their own, they were headed by a governor and they were, they were, they were headed by a governor. The next feature of the policy of assimilation we'll be looking at is Africans were divided into citizens and subject. There was dual citizenship in, in the, in the policy of assimilation. Under the policy of assimilation, there was something that was called the dual citizenship, whereby Africans were divided into citizens and subjects. Inhabitants of the four communes in Senegal, namely Dakar, St. Louis, Gori, Gori, and Rufix, 
were regarded as citizens and others in other communes were regarded as subjects so africans were africans in west africa the africans under the colonial territory the africans under the colonial territories of france in west africa they were divided into what we call citizens and subjects so people that um people that lived in the four communes of senegal namely dakar st louis gori and rufix they were regarded as citizens while others that were not within these four communes they were regarded as subjects so subjects did not have the right they were unable to enjoy the rights and the privileges that citizens were able to enjoy when we go through as we are going in this series of um, french colonial rules in french colonial administration as we go through the series of french colonial administration in west africa you would see more of the privileges that citizens enjoyed as against the subjects and the qualities that um would make a person as at that time be assimilated as a French citizen. The next feature of the policy of assimilation we'll be looking at is education. Education was restricted was restricted to the children of chiefs and people in the poor commune. So, education was restricted under under the French um, under the French system of administration, which is policy of assimilation. Education was restricted to only children of the chiefs and the people in the four communes. So, this is one of the benefits that citizens of the four that people that were regarded as citizens are over those that were regarded as subjects. People that were regarded as citizens, they had the opportunity to be educated, while those that were regarded as subjects were not, they did not have the right to education. So education was restricted under the policy of assimilation and was restricted only to people in the four communes who are regarded as citizens or the children of chiefs. The next feature of the policy of assimilation we'll be looking at is it used direct system of administration to administer its rule to the people. So the French themselves, they were directly involved in administering their rules to the people of West Africa. The, they were there. Um, if you look through our series, when we looked at um, British colonial administration in Nigeria and we looked at um, indirect rule, you will see that the British were not directly involved in administering their rules to the people. But instead, they made use of the traditional rulers. So they made their policies and whatever they wanted the people to do known to the traditional rulers. And the traditional rulers, in turn, made this known to the people. But the opposite is what we have in the French colonial administration of West Africa, and which is um, the policy of assimilation. They used direct rule. They used direct system of administration to administer to the people. And as a result of, um, along the line, they found out that, okay, this, um, the French officials, they have, they are not enough to, you know, go through the whole of their colonial territories, the provinces, the, um, the canton divisions, the villages or cantons and, you know, the rest. So they decided to include, they decided to include the traditional rulers in the civil service in the local administration. So direct, the direct system of them, the French used a direct system of administration whereby they themselves, they were involved in administering their rules to the people. The French were the governor general, they were the governor, they were the canton, they were the um, provisional commissioners, they were the district officers and the rest. So, and they were in the important positions. But along the line, they found out that there was inadequacy of French officials so decided to include traditional rulers in their civil service in the local in the local administration of the people. The next feature of the policy of assimilation we'll be looking at in this class is assimilate is assimilated citizens that is um, the people that inhabited the four communes in Senegal which are Dakar, St. Louis, Gori and Rufix. They could be elected into the French legislative as deputies or Senators, so the, the assimilated citizens under the policy of assimilation could be elected into the French legislative as deputies or senators. So this again is one of the um, benefits that the assimilated citizens and um, the people that inhabited the four communes of the four communes where the policy of assimilation was used, which is in Senegal, um, and the four communes are Dakar, Saint Louis, Gori, and Rufix. Rufix. The assimilated citizens, they, they enjoyed the privilege such that they could be elected into the French legislative and they could be deputies or senators. And this is a total difference from what we had in the indirect rule, whereby the, they did not use, um, they did, um, citizens were probably, they were either not in the legislative council or they were non-official members of the legislative council.
The next feature of policy of assimilation we'll be looking at in this class is the African culture, the native laws, and the language of the people were not respected. So under the policy of assimilation, it was all about turning the people into Frenchmen, changing their lifestyle, changing their culture, changing their language, changing their mindset to make them become Frenchmen. So this um, led to the loss of some cultures in Africa, some languages in Africa, and some some of the native laws in, land, in Africa, in West Africa. So the African culture, the native laws and the language of the people were not respected. The, the French imposed their culture because they saw their culture as superior to the African culture. They saw they imposed their culture on the people of, on the people that they colonized. The next feature of policy of assimilation is the system was repressive. It was it was it was an obnoxious system. It made use of the in, indigenous. It made it made use of the indigenous policy, forced labor, conscription into the army, and covey of covey to have, to oppress the people. So the French system of administration was repressive. It was obnoxious. It made use of indigent. It made use of in, indigenous policy. Indigenous policy is was a policy used by the French whereby they could arrest and detain citizens that did not obey their policy, unwilling citizens, stubborn citizens, people that did not they were they were not willing to accept their 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 rule. They were not willing to be involved in such um they were not willing to be assimilated, they were not willing to obey their rules. Um the, the indigenous policy is a policy that allowed the French to detain these people the disobedient Africans for two years without trial. So they could detain any disobedient African for two years without trial. They had they had the right to detain these people without trying them in court or without these people um, being able to plead guilty, without these people being able to plead guilty or non-guilty or not guilty. So the indigenous policy allowed the French to detain Africans that were not willing to obey their policies unlawfully for two years without trial. So that's one of the features of the policy of assimilation. Also, they were they used forced labor. There was forced labor, and they forced people into the army against their own will. They forced people to join the army. They forced people to join the to join the army unlawfully against their own will. They forced them to join the army. Also, one of the features of the policy of assimilation is they they. For people that were unable to pay tax, they they use them for labor. They they gave them, they use them for labor. They use them for labor, and instead of paying them, they would say, okay, this labor is your tax. So they 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 worked the people. They they used forced labor, and they did not pay the wages of the people that were. They did not pay the wages of the people that were um, that they that they used for the forced labor. So this was also one of the. Um, features of the policy of assimilation, the use of forced labor, conscription into army, forcing people to the army, even against their own will, the indigenous policy whereby these people, um, whereby they could unlawfully detain Africans without trying them for two years. These are all of the features of the policy of assimilation. The next feature of the policy of assimilation is Frenchified and educated elites were integrated into the system. So the Africans that were already assimilated, they were already French men, they already um they they you already had all the qualifications that could all the qualifications to become French men, these people were integrated into the system. So um unlike the policy we had in um Britain colonial rule in Nigeria in the indirect rule whereby regardless of education or not or being not um or not being educated, they did not allow educated elites in their system of adding uh, in their system of administration, the Frenchified and educated elites under the French colonial administration in West Africa, they were integrated into the system. Also, another feature of the policy of assimilation is there was no respect for African traditional political institution. There was no respect for the institutions that Africans themselves already had in place. They did not respect the fact that these people, they already had um, their own native laws, they already had their native courts, they have their, they have their native police, they have their native systems of, ad, of administration. You know, when we looked um, through the series of pre-colonial administration in Nigeria, every other African, um, every other African 
countries and people they also had their the ways they administered their rules their pre-colonial systems of administration even before the coming of colonization in west africa but when the french came to when the french came to west africa they did not respect this these um, systems of administrations that Africans already had in place before, they did not respect their native laws, their native courts, their native police, their traditional rulers. Traditional rulers were not respected under the policy of assimilation. There was no respect whatsoever for traditional rulers under the policy of assimilation. So traditional rulers were just seen as, they were seen as nobodies under the um, policy of assimilation. In fact, traditional rulers, they were in the lowest position under the policy of assimilation and with this we've come to the end of the class in the next class we'll be looking at the other features of the policy of assimilation reasons why the policy of assimilation failed and why the french decided to abandon the policy of assimilation i'll see you at the next class